Hey, it's Garb August, I'm told. Um, I still haven't read any Garb August books, but I've got kind of a, I guess a TBR. I know what series I'm going to read, but first I want to talk about the things that inspired it. Steve Donahue, uh, I'll try and link to it in the comments, did a great video, I think it went up today or yesterday, about the Executioner series in the 70s. And he does a great review of that first book, which I think I read long ago. Um, I had an idea of it in my mind. I know I've read a couple of the Executioner books. I'm not going to read any this time, the Mac and Executioner books. I really enjoyed his review of it, though. And they're not very good. Um, but they are an example of a type of book that was very common. I suppose it was the most popular series. I don't know what you'd call the men's adventure or something. Uh, I thought of the executioner, Mac Bowen. He's a he's a assassin. He's a sniper. He's a Vietnam era sniper. I think it's Vietnam era sniper who decides to go uh, to war against the mafia, go around all by himself and kill mafioso all over the country in books that are numbered by city. I'm looking for uh, some covers that I downloaded. I remember reading, I'm pretty sure I read the first one, War Against the Mafia. It was very hard to find back then. Of course, back then you had to either, um, you know, just you just take what was available at the store. There was no uh, internet or anything, I guess. You could, you could special order a book. Um, and... That's a strange thing about these type of series. If I could just find the pictures I got. There was a lot of them, but they were numbered. Let's see if I can find one here. Uh, like comic books. That's probably why I was obsessed with them. I This is one I read for sure when I was young. Uh, when I was in high school and it came out, probably came out in like 71 or something. Vegas Vendetta. I thought that was cool because... Uh, I was from Nevada. At this time, I lived in Reno, but I knew that the Golden Nugget sign there uh, was like a, a real landmark that I knew because we visited my grandmother every summer, or most summers. Um, remember, this had a really graphic uh, lesbian sex scene in it, I think, if this is the one. That was fun for uh, a 12-year-old. Uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't look at our reading back then, which is good which is fine so uh that series i think i remember it as being and i might have it mixed up in in my mind i thought it was i thought this was a guy whose family had been killed by the mafia and so he goes on a, a vengeance uh, that is the, the origin story of of the Punisher, of course, in Marvel Comics, which seems to me, which I always thought of as a direct ripoff of, of this book. These books were wildly popular, series like this. Of course, it's obviously more of a ripoff of Death Wish. Um, and, or the, the Punisher is, I guess, because I don't actually remember if he even has a personal motivation or he just decides to just start killing Mafia people. Books are not great, uh, you know, these numbers really didn't mean anything uh, unless you went to the bookstore every month, I guess, to get the new one because they would just have random ones. And I think this went up to a couple hundred or something. Uh, there was another series around the same time. This might have even been more popular. And I read some of these at the time, too, The Destroyer. This is Remo Williams was The Destroyer. These were a bit better written. They're a little more science fiction-y. They're a little uh, more clever. Um, still, I didn't read a lot of them. I I remember there was a they tried to start a a, a cinematic series of them in the eighties, I think. With with uh, uh, who was it? Uh, some good actor, and they had and. Uh, Remo Williams is the main actor in this, I mean, the main character in the series, but he's got an older mentor, Asian character. There's like, you know, this is around the era of, you know, a lot of martial arts influence and stuff. Uh, in the movie, that character, that Asian character is played by Roddy McDowell, which is way 
much, much later than you would think that people would still be making uh, these kind of yellow face uh, uh, acting choices, you know, like from the 70s or something. I think that was in the 80s anyway. Uh, Fred, uh, what's, what's the guy's name? Uh, it doesn't matter. I wish I hadn't got off on that whole thing. So I just wanted to point those two out as the kind of books uh, that are perfect for Garb August. And I really enjoyed Steve Donahue's video, uh, just savaging uh, Don Pendleton's Executioner series, which is really pretty weak. Uh, there's another one. This one that always... Uh, this is just like a random one. Because uh, most of these series, most of these imitations that came out, um, and I don't know if these are in print or not either. I just pulled the the cover off the off the web because this one always struck me. This probably ran like six or eight or ten. A, a lot of these series, you know, they were just they were just all the publishers were just coming up with every concept they could to just make more of these series, and they really weren't selling anywhere as near as well as the Executioner or the Destroyer did, both of which ran into the hundreds you know, with plenty of ghost writers later on and stuff. This one's kind of interesting, though, because this guy, you can kind of see his face there. This is an actor named Paul Peterson, who was a child star who was on the Donna Reed show as one of Donna Reed's kids. And he's kind of, and then kind of in the 60s, he kind of went like, he's kind of like a, a low-rent or a bargain basement Dennis Hopper type guy where he became a hippie and all this stuff. So, And he wrote this series about this 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 exotic smuggler guy who gets in these kind of, you know, who's a drug smuggler, but he's also involved in these kind of espionage things. Didn't read any of those either, but it's just always something that struck in my mind. So why am I talking about all this? There is one series that I am going to read, and I have, these, these books have been reissued. Uh, this is another one I remember uh, from when I was a kid. There's 14 of these books. So it was probably over about a year and two months that they were published. These are called The Lone Wolf. This is number two. Bay Prowler, you can see this one probably takes place in San Francisco. Number five, he goes to Havana. All these places that Mike Berry probably never visited. Um, and he is a uh, cop. You can see he's like a salt and pepper haired guy. He's, you know, sort of cut in the mold of... of Lee Van Cleef or something like that, Lee Marvin from those kind of those those kind of action things. He is a tough as nails uh, New York City cop who decides to kill everyone in the United States involved in the drug trade. So these are supposed to be very violent, which is fun for me. Here's an interesting thing though. So I wanted to show these covers, and you see how similar all these different kind of things were. You know how they really featured the number and these books were never really sequential it's not like you had to read them in order so probably this is number five too i don't know why i picked all these number fives but you know probably in the end the numbers started probably hurting them because if you're just reading along and you can see well the you go into the bookstore or the 7-eleven and the rack has number seven and number 21 and and you know, you, the numbers really don't mean anything because they're they're not uh, they're more like episodes of a TV series than they would be. I mean, of a TV series of that era, as opposed to you know a cable series today where you have to read them all in order or anything like that. But anyway, I always remembered them, even though I read relatively few of them because I was busy reading. Tarzan and stuff like that, I suppose. But, you know, they were always around when I was a kid on, on the bookshelves. I guess you'd call them men's adventure books. They were, I, you know, anybody could read them, I suppose. But I, I think they were mostly marketed towards men, I would imagine. So they're like really focused on violence and a little bit of sex. And i got to get back to my photos again. So anyway, these... Uh, Lone Wolf ones, these 14 books in the series, uh, Mike Berry, I, I think you can guess that's a pen name, uh, have been reissued twice. They were reissued a few years ago as 14 individual uh, books. And i got to find that page now. 14 books. I don't want to hear it. 
uh, from Prologue Books, uh, one one of the agri- one of the uh, small presses that started issuing a lot of uh, ebook only special editions of of old out of out of print books. Uh, and th- these are what I have. I have all fourteen of these. I don't know if they were a dollar each or two dollars each or why I bought them all, but and never thought about them again. Anyway, like you know, and the t- the covers are crap. Look at this. What? There's really nothing on this that would make me want to read it. Um, it's supposed to be some sort of style, like it's supposed to be a postcard or something. I don't know. Um, uh, anyway, there's the number, there's the prologue books, does publish a lot of reissues of old noir books and things like that. Here's the whole series. I don't know why I'm bothered with that. See, first couple just have kind of a generic title, but then it's it's all mostly alliterative uh, titles of Miami Marauder. I guess it's the only alliterative one, alliterative one, where he goes around the world killing different drug, drug dealers. And these are what I'm going to read for Garb August, uh, as far as I get. I don't know, 14 of them. If they, if the first couple are just terrible, it would be nice to do all 14, because that would get me close to my numbers by the end of the month. Um, and see, you know, it's like... You know, but I realize these are done on a shoestring. They don't really have a lot of uh, money for covers. But I cannot hardly imagine anything worse, anything duller to revive these. This, these don't really evoke the era or anything at all. That's why I wanted to show those other covers to see what these, to show you what these books are really like or were like. And I said they couldn't get any worse, but boy was I wrong because now there is. Now Prologue Books no longer has the series. They've been reissued again by another small press, called, independent press called Stark House, which does print books and as well as e-books. And they've reissued a lot of uh, obscure titles from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They've done it, instead of just... Uh, uh, 14 single issues for a buck or two or three. They've decided to issue seven seven volumes, two novels per each. Uh, and I think they're like six ninety nine or something. So they're a little expensive. But this will show you, and I'll show you two things on this cover. This is, I'll show you first the reason why I am so excited to read these books. Because I found out who... Mike Berry is. You know, many of these people, of course, be have other uh, more well-known names. Some of them are just obscure, but you know, there's like uh, Gardner Fox, the <clears throat> the famous comic writer, wrote a bunch of series. I'll get to later in the month. I've got some of his books that he wrote um, under different pen names, but these were written by not a famous mystery writer, but one of the greatest science fiction writers of all time. Mike Berry is Barry N. Malsberg. This is how he was making a living between writing his experimental books like Beyond Apollo and many others. Uh, these are published by Starkhouse to each, and they, they made the sensible uh, change of putting Barry Malsberg's book on the cover. Whereas the other titles I show you just had Mike Berry on the cover, but they also did, you know, explain in the foreword who uh, Mike Berry was, Barry Malzberg, and there's an article done at this time. So he wrote these, you know, purely for money. Uh, I have no idea if they're terrible or if they're mediocre or if they're kind of interesting, but obviously it only ran 14 books. It seems like a long series, but for this kind of thing, it's not really a long series. I'm <clears throat> Like I said, they probably came out once, once a month. So I've got them in the seven uh, as 14 individual e-books. Uh, oh, but my other point about that cover was like, as, this is even worse. I mean, this is, they all look like this. There's like a different background, but they all, they all just got this generic thing of a gun and so, you know, they're just, I understand these companies are really doing this on a shoestring. They can't be putting out a lot of money for 
for covers for the for these books that are probably not going to sell that well. These old cult style books, but I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if they could figure out a way on some of these old things to, to get the cover rights the rights for the old paperback cover and just stick that old that old sleazy cover on there but I don't know if that's even possible <clears throat> anyway that's what we're dealing with so I wanted to show all the other kind of covers so you can see more of the style of the books I'll be reading for Garbagas remember it's this kind of thing it's it's uh, you know, really sleazy action, a uh, 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 terrified woman in the background, an angry man with guns and, and a grenade and explosions. This is Garb August Central, you know, compared to this. Like, what is this? You know, just, just, uh, just kind of busy kind of design. You see this one is two books. It's Havana Hit, number five, and Chicago Slaughter, number six. But, you know, you can't even, you, you have to look at this for quite a while to see that this is two books and what's going on there. And But it does at least credit uh, Barry Malsberg. Hopefully he gets a little money here. And look at the name of the series. The series is called The Lone Wolf. Look at that. There it is. That fuzzy yellow barely readable text <clears throat> kind of like that should be the big thing anyway so we'll see how they go I, I've been putting off uh, uh, talking about this because I figured I'd read the books first and you know who knows maybe I'll be back in a couple of days and say the first one was just so terrible I'm not going to finish the series but I'll probably read the, at least the first couple and I think I'll enjoy them just by the by virtue of the fact that they are written by Barry Malsberg and he was a very fast writer. He wrote even his classic novels. He wrote almost all of them in one draft. The Men Inside, Beyond Apollo. Uh, he, uh, you know, was writing for money. He, was, he had a, a lot of ideas that he threw out there. The last book I read by him was The Gamesman. I talked about on another... Uh, review. So this is just to see what he was doing. You know, I always hear rumors about the different things that these writers did at this time, especially <clears throat> writers like Malsberg, who, along with Ed McBain and Lawrence Block, and uh, who else? At least one more I can think of, another mystery writer, Donald Westlake all kind of worked, all, they were all represented by the Scott Meredith Literary Agency and they were all employed there as, um, as, as critiquers, I guess. Scott Meredith Literary Agency had a legitimate literary uh, business where they represented books. They also uh, did a thing that's considered <coughs> scammy now. I think they in invented it where they would say, no, we like your book, but it's not ready for publication. But if you pay us like a thousand bucks or whatever the equivalent of the time would be, we'll we'll uh, give you some critique on how to make it better. And Malsberg and Block and and some of these other writers who were professional writers and cranking out this stuff for a thousand dollars a a title <clears throat> under under pen names um, would write some of these critiques that. Uh, that people could buy and see and uh, another part of the work they would do packages uh, Scott Meredith would sell packages of books that were Scott Meredith the agency would um, come up with a, a concept maybe maybe this was even one of them uh, con come up with a, a series concept and a pen name and then farm out the uh, <clears throat> the actual writing to to Block or Malzberg or Westlake, one of these people where they'd get even less than normally for books they would get under their own name. So <clears throat> it was it was quite a machine going on there, and it's just an interesting uh, time in publishing that's like nothing we'll ever see again, I don't think, because, it, you know, publishing so diffuse now, <clears throat> the equivalent of that, this would be, now would just be people doing it on their own and trying their best to get their self-published books out there under a bunch of different names and <clears throat> there's people 
even now that I write a book a month, a book every two weeks, you know, it started out with prolific writers like uh, Max Brand, who uh, we talked about during uh, Western Month, and of course the pulp writers like uh, Lester Dent and Doc Savage, who wrote, uh, and Maxwell Grant, uh, who was, have I got the names wrong, Lester Dent was was Kenneth Robeson and <clears throat> Maxwell Grant uh, was who wrote The Shadow. What was his real name? I don't remember. Anyway, those were monthly books. So those guys wrote a book every month, and then come to the fifties and sixties, people were writing their 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 porn books, like like semi porn erotica books, but not really uh, porn what we think of today, but just like sort of titillating sort of. Um, uh, spicy books, I guess. They would write those in a couple weeks. They would write this kind of thing. And, you know, in between trying to write their serious books, too. So, and now, of course, people who are um, self publishing, some of them write <clears throat> hundreds of books. Some of them have written, you know, there's, there's Western writers now, they're still writing a book a month and, you know, doing very well with that. So it's possible to write fast if you know what you're doing. And, you know, of course, there's a lot of terrible, terrible stuff online. <clears throat> um, uh, in self-publishing, but there's a lot of books that are very... Uh, there's a few series that are very popular, and there's many, many people trying to to catch the wave after them. So we'll see how they go. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll talk... I'll read at least one of them, um, of these Mike Berry books, uh, if they're you know, report back on how they are. I'm not really expecting a lot, but that's, you know, that's the advantage of, of Garb August, to, to, to just read some stuff like this, and we'll talk again. <laughs>